This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're going to move across now and look at the other side, financial liabilities. There's less here to say because financial assets was both shares and loans. Financial liabilities, by definition, is just loans, so much less to say. Initially, as it says, on the day when you first recognise a financial liability, recognise at fair value. Fair value, of course, would tend to be the money that's been received. Or the money that's borrowed. The only exception is about convertible loans. We'll talk about those in a different lecture, but generally it's the money received. It may be that you've actually, again, had to pay transaction costs. Again, they will effectively, again, reduce the amount of money that you're actually receiving. So that's why it says net proceeds. So with financial assets, transaction costs are added. With financial liabilities, transaction costs are deducted. We'll see an example of that in just a minute. Usually, financial liabilities are the same as financial assets, measured at amortised cost. The one exception that you need to be aware of is that occasionally it may be more appropriate to measure them at fair value with gains or losses going through the profit and loss. So what's that all about? Well, IFRS 9 says that that would be the case if you are trying to prevent something that's known as an accounting mismatch. Now, there's a most extraordinary sentence, isn't it? An accounting mismatch. Accounting mismatches occur sometimes when you look at the two parts of a particular deal or transaction and you seem to account for them inconsistently. So as an example of that, not one that you'd have to worry about with numbers, if you borrow money to finance an investment property, Remember what we said about investment properties, they are usually measured at, um, at uh, fair value. So if you've got an investment property at fair value, it's financed by a loan which is measured at cost. It's a bit silly. So to correct the mismatch, what might be appropriate is to measure both of them at fair value. You don't want to start dragging the investment property back to the cost model. And I'm not an economist, but we all understand, I think, that interest rates affect borrowing costs, affect um, interest rates, affect the fair value of liabilities. So it might make sense to measure both the asset and the related liability at fair value. But the usual treatment is that when we borrow money, the, the key thing is, isn't it, that you initially recognise it, the amount borrowed, Later on, a bit like when you lend money, you'll use amortised cost accounting. So we need to try that in just a moment. I've also put a little note in there about de-recognition, but that's fairly common sense. When you've actually got rid of your liability, that is the time, again, to actually de-recognise it. But you'd need to make sure in practice that the risks and rewards have been transferred to another company, that you're not suddenly going to get stuck with that liability again. But if you've got rid of it, it's fine. You can de-recognise it. Let's have a look now at the accounting, whereas we look at this question called Norma. If you want, pause the recording for a minute. Try and have a go at the numbers, certainly for the first year, and then I'll run through Norma with you. Because the, the numbers are quite big, 
it's probably easier to answer this in thousand dollar terms. Otherwise, we're going to have zeros all across the page. So in Norma, this word issue is very important. Remember, the issue is posh for borrow. It's a financial liability. So they borrow money. And then as far as all this business goes, the key thing is try and just do what it says on the tin. So be very calm. What do we, so 20,000, each has a par value of 100. And there are issue costs of 100,000. We know that issue costs must be deducted. Financial assets, you add the issue costs on. Financial liabilities, you deduct them. We're being asked about this transaction over four years. So that's quite useful, I think, to use all the numbers in this question. So here we come to accounting for Norma. Nice big working. Four column working. Brought down at the start. That's the figure that would be in the opening soft P. Add on the finance cost. That's the figure that will be in the profit and loss. Deduct any cash that's paid. That's the figure that would go in the cash flow. And that would give us the carried down figure. Again, in the closing soft P. We're looking at four years. So down the side, I'll just write year one, two, three, and four. When the financial liability first arises, if I can tuck this in here, let's look back at the scenario. 20,000, because I'm going to do this in $1,000 terms, I'll knock off the last three zeros. So it's 20 times 100, less the issue costs of 100. So let me write that up before I forget. There we are. 20 times 100, less 100. So if my units are correct, I must be calm. That's 1900. For the finance cost, you always use the effective rate in the loan. It'll be called effective rate. The effective rate, I can see it now. I'm just going to highlight it in blue. The effective rate is 4.58%. So I'm going to round everything. 4.58% of 1,900, if I round, is 87. Remember that the coupon payment or cash flow is always on the nominal value of the loan. So data for the coupon, just going to highlight in green, 2% times 20, times 100. So the coupon, always fixed at the same amount, 2% times 20, times 100. 20,000 times 2%, 20,000 times 2%. Let me make sure I've got my units right. Oh no, 20, so silly boy. 20 times 100 times 2% is 2,000 times 2%. Yeah, so that's 40. The carrying value at the end of the first year is 1947. If you were struggling with that, then just pause the recording, have a go at the other three years, and then I'll go through them. Second year, 1947 times 4.58%, 89. 
Again, less 40. Carrying value of the liability, 1996. Third year, 1996, 4.58%. 91, 40, I think that's 2047. Now in the last year, I'm going to do a little bit of rounding. Yeah. Um, I know it's 93.7, trust me, you have no choice anyway, just put 93. I won't tell anyone if you don't. It's just because we've rounded stuff. 40. And see the magic here. To 100. Now look back at the scenario. It says, doesn't it, in the scenario, not that you particularly need this information. It says in the scenario that the debenture will be redeemed Let's find those words at a 5% premium. And you can see that's true. It has happened automatically. That's what amortized cost is all about. The debenture was 2000. 5% of 2000 is 100. So, yes, it is being redeemed at some kind of bonus. And it's because these things are issued at a discount and redeemed at a premium that someone very clever has to work out the internal rate of return, which is the 4.58%, otherwise known as the effective rate, which is what determines our finance cost in the P&L. And that's it for financial liabilities.